Hello, everyone. Come on in. I'll give it a minute for everybody to come on in and let me know that we are good with sound and video. Thank you for joining us for tonight's class. We are going to be talking about compliance success. So this class is available and open to all Young Living members and any team, anywhere. Um, obviously the rules would apply differently for people in other countries. So this is specific to United States members. Um, come on in, welcome to my bedroom. It was the only place that I had tonight that could get away from the noise a little bit and the chaos. So. Awesome, thanks Andrea. So my name is Sarah Dopoff. I am a platinum leader with Young Living and I have six kids. Um, and tonight was a crazy night in the coffee house that I normally go to get some time away and quiet space for videos was not available tonight. So I'm in my bedroom. So get comfy. Lori, hey! So if you wanna get something to take notes with, it might be a good idea. I am gonna to try to simplify this and not try I'm going to simplify this for you because it's really rather simple we just have to know the most important things and um, thanks Kathy my favorite diffuser the desert mist diffuser on the candlelight setting my favorite 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 I love it so we're gonna break this down make it really simple there's just uh, four basic things that I want to go over tonight so right now I am I'm a platinum leader and I am actually in the middle of a compliance audit right now and I was in a compliance audit I think as an executive three years ago when the whole compliance thing kind of really started and a lot and a lot of people were going through it at the time it was difficult and I sort of gave up at the time so back then three years ago uh, I was just starting out, I was an executive, and I kind of wasn't really trying much or putting in much effort, it just kind of happened, and I decided that it wasn't really worth the effort, the compliance thing was just, it just seemed so overwhelming. I'm, I'm a blogger, and that's where I have a lot of social media, I have a lot of social media presence, and so that was kind of a big task for me. Oh, Carrie from Australia, awesome, I love hearing you guys talk. So when I was going through it the first time, I basically deleted everything on my website. My website is Healthy Families for God, for those of you who don't know. And I deleted everything that had to do with essential oils because I was like, just forget it. It's just, I didn't quite understand it. I've read and heard from a bunch of other Young Living members who have completely quit to the point of inactivating their account with Young Living and no longer getting the products that they love because of this and so I really felt like it was a good opportunity for me to get get as much information as I could as many details as I could since I was on the phone with the compliance team and just get it all to you guys because the last thing I want to see is you guys lose this thing that we love and the opportunity to really grow in your team and help other people just because of this one thing hi Nikki so I want to give you guys the tools to really succeed and not have to worry about this compliance thing coming back and making you want to quit. So that's what, I, that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, things have been different from the first time I went through the compliance audit. So three years ago when I went through the compliance audit, I changed the things that I, that, you know, that I was told to do and then things changed over three years and they are constantly changing. So we should be aware of the changes, but at the same time, Young Living's really doing a really good job of keeping us updated on the changes and things like that, that we need to know right in our virtual office in the member resources. And some of the stuff I'm going to go over tonight is in the virtual office member resources section. So it's right there. I'm just going to kind of summarize the information, talk about the most important things, and give you a place to go for more information. Hi, Marie. So the four things, okay, so first, for those of you just starting out, now I want to talk to everybody in all different levels, whether you're just starting out as a new member or, you know, you're, you're a diamond, because let's face it, I've seen diamond posts, too, that are not compliant. And uh, when you're at that level, you know, even for me at platinum level, um, oh, Christine said that 
compliance is why you quit working your business too. Yep, and I don't want to see anybody have to stop doing something they love out of fear. I'm so glad you're here, Christine. That's exactly why I'm doing this. Um, so, you know, at platinum level, it was a little bit tougher of a pill for me to swallow because I have a team of over a thousand people that I love helping and leading and I don't want to, um, you know, leave them high and dry or anything. And, and I just really don't want to leave the income at that level either. So we're going to get through this. We're going to make it simple. The best thing you can do is take tonight's information and go through your posts and make sure they line up with the compliance regulations and then then you have nothing to worry about and it, it's just it's just a big burden gone right so for those of you starting out as soon as we become a young living member because of the way that it's formula you know set up as a direct marketing company with like with any direct marketing company we are bound by business speech laws so business speech laws by the FDA and other governmental and regulatory agencies say that we do not have free speech anymore on this topic because we are potentially financially invested so we are bound by business speech laws and then, and that's okay there's good reasons for this okay because essential oils are not medications because if they were we wouldn't be able to just order them like we do like we love doing right I mean some of you may be like me not only do you order once but at least twice a month and sometimes if you forget something on those you're ordering on a quick order or redeeming your essential rewards points and so we have that free access to these essential oils and that's why these regulatory laws are why we have free access to it and that is why Young Living is so passionate about maintaining and respecting those laws because Young Living is quite frankly taking over the natural health world and in order to maintain our ability to be able to access and get those products and the essential oils whenever we want, we have to comply with those legalities. This is um, also very freeing in that it is relieving us of any any liability as far as uh, health practice, health practicing goes. So, if we are making recommendations for diseases. Uh, we are kind of opening ourselves up personally to medical liabilities and things like that there too. Right, we don't want that diagnosis responsibility. So it, it, it's very freeing, it's okay. Sometimes I know it's hard. Some of you are probably like me where you're just really into the research. You've got that personality that really likes to get into the research and you're just astounded by it and you want to share it and things like that. And, and so that does that does make it hard but that's okay that's okay this is for our own good so maintaining compliance speech basically on social media is mostly what I'm gonna be talking about tonight it's easier than we realize and I'll admit the reason that I got audited the second time because of two two details that I was kind of missing and so I want to make sure you guys don't miss those because the majority of posts that I see that are not compliant are because of these. So, first of all, let me just go into this. I'm just going to go really basic right from the beginning. For So, for those of you just starting out, this is great for you. Okay. So, Young Living has, now Young Living, you guys know, is very high in integrity. And so, that's another reason why Young Living is so big on maintaining and complying the the regulations and things like that. Integrity is such a big part of Young Living and I love that. And so in order to really just um, continue to share and be that kind of integrity that Young Living has, this is really great for us to learn how to be compliant. Young Living has two different kinds of essential oils. So you know you've got the Vitality which is labeled for internal use and you've got the the other one which is labeled for topical and aromatic use now this is regulated as a cosmetic okay so the, the what we can say about this is very different than what we can say about this products that are labeled as cosmetics are not labeled for supporting body systems okay so we cannot say this thieves supports the immune system because it's labeled as a cosmetic. Cosmetics don't support systems of our body. They don't support functions of our body. And so what we're talking about right now is what's called a structure function claim. Structure function claims have to do with the body systems and things like that. 
structure function claims can only be made about internal products like the internal essential oils, the vitality ones, and supplements. Okay, so that's a big one where I, when, when Young Living came out with the separate ones, um, I had to go back to that date where they came out with these and fix all those in between there because some of them were structure function claims for the cosmetic one, the topical and aromatic one. So if you want to post a picture and you want to say that thieves, that you've chosen to use thieves today to support your immune system, make sure you are using the vitality version, okay? Be really, this is really important. If you want to talk about how D-limonene supports liver health and D-limonene is very high in citrus oils, use the vitality citrus oils, okay? If, you're, if you've got citrus fresh, we're not talking about using it internally, so we're not talking about structure function claims. So um, what we are going to do is, you know, make sure that you're using the right model if you're posting the picture. If you want to cover all your bases, post them both. Use a picture and, sh and show them both, okay? Um, and then you can talk about, for instance, how Citrus Fresh you know, provides a very nice clean aroma in the home, okay? Something like that. And that would be with this one. So when you, for any post, if you are going to be making peppermint brownies and all you have is the um, non-vitality peppermint and you're using that on your brownies, that's fine, but you can't advertise that. You can't publicly show that you are using the non-vitality for your peppermint brownies. You need to have the vitality bottle to show um, if you want to show that you're making peppermint brownies, right? So don't be posting a picture of this thieves and saying how you put it in your oatmeal to support your immune system, right? You've got to do that with the vitality one, okay? All right, so that's the structure function claim. That's where my biggest hang up was. Yeah, it's, it's like confusing at first, but really it's not. It's really not simple. It's it's really simple actually I mean it's it's just like are you talking about um, supporting a part of the body a system of the body right here if you're not you know feel free to use this one okay it's just internal cosmetic topical aromatic super simple um, because you know we're not gonna be like talking about how our mascara supports our hormones right I mean okay using non-toxic mascara will but we can't we don't say mascara is going to support our hormones because it's a cosmetic it's a topical uh, product but we can with the internal ones so that applies to the vitality ones if we're going to be talking about functions of the body we're not going to be talking about no matter what we do with the internal ones with the vitality ones we are, um, yes, you can, Jen, you can show both the vitality and the regular oil and, and just knock out all your uses for it, right? You could talk about how you're diffusing thieves for that fabulous fall smell and, you know, you can't say that you're applying it topically to support your immune system though, right? So, um, look at what Young Living says for using it topically, you know, what the words are that the phrases that they say are, and then and then say, yeah, but I'm using it too. You know what I mean? Just say it all. You can say it all and use both of them. So it helps to have both of them. And then, then you've got your bases covered. Use the vitality and the regular. And then you can use the structure function claims and, you know, the, the ones about diffusing it and things like that too. They are, Jenny, they are exactly the same. The contents of the bottles inside of here are exactly the same oil. It's just the labels that are different. It's just us abiding by the regulatory rules of the wonderful FDA. So the FDA is based, just came out uh, recently, earlier this year I think it was, and they basically said that you cannot have something labeled for topical aromatic and internal use. And so Young Living was really just complying with the newest regulations, that, you know, in their integrity and um, came out with the Vitality line too. So it's just a different label, same oil inside of it. So the only thing, the things that we can, now we can take, we can say structure function claims about the vitality oils, the internal ones, but we can never say what's called hot words. These are disease claims. We cannot say 
that this is a natural, whoops, we cannot say that this is a natural antibiotic. We cannot say that this is, um, you know, anti-inflammatory or it helps with pain or it helps with germs. We can't say that. Um, those are disease claims, what they're called. And disease claims you cannot make with any of, any of the vitality or regular oils. So what I encourage you to do is go into your member resources in your virtual office and look up the conduct success hot words. Be careful that you're not using those. Those are the ones that get you flagged really fast because the FDA really hones in on those especially. And so um, we're not gonna say strep throat, we're not gonna say virus, we're not gonna say cold, we're not gonna say pain, flu, and we're not gonna say those in any of, this, the, in any of our posts talking about essential oils. So, you know, we might say, okay, so we're going to take thieves to support our immune system because there's a cold going around. We're not going to say that because the cold was in the same same post. So we're not going to have it in the same post either. Um, we're not going to, you know, have any of these hot words in any post dealing with essential oils. So if you want to put a post about how thieves support your immune system, thieves vitality, and then you want to do a separate post talking about cold and flu stuff that has nothing to do with essential oils, that's fine. Okay, but you cannot have them in the same post. Does that make sense? Uh, so it includes your personal page, any of your business pages, any of your, um, especially public groups, and we'll talk about private groups and messages in a minute. But yes, it's on any social media. It includes on Instagram, Flickr, Pinterest, and it doesn't matter if it's a graphic that you made or somebody else made. If you're posting it, you're responsible for it, for the content of it. So if you see somebody else posting something and you think that's great information, make sure it's compliant before you share it because a lot of it isn't. So you've got to judge for yourself the things that you're going to share. And if you just feel like you're not sure how to do that yet, then don't share anything that somebody else is posting. Make it your own. And besides, making it your own is a way better way to be successful on social media anyway. So I have 26,000 people on one of my pages and 4,000 or something on another and something like that. So I'm going to tell you that doing your own posts anyway, making it your own, is a way better way to be successful. All right, so watch those conduct success, those hot words, and make sure that you're not putting them in hashtags or emojis. Make sure you're not implying either. So um, there's this thing called an implied disease claim. Implied disease claims may refer to symptoms of a disease or imply the use of a product in the treatment of a disease. So we're not gonna really like try to hint at it either because that goes under the implied disease claim. So what I find helpful is, first of all, use the suggested product words, product claims that Young Living gives us. Um, that's a good question, Don. I'll talk about that. So use the words that Young Living gives us. You go to the website and you look up Thieves Essential Oil and you see what they said about it. Or you go to your member resources in your virtual office and you go in there and you look up the suggested claims. They have a suggested claims. And here's the cool thing. Young Living hears us on this, okay? They understand that we want to be able to say more. That we don't want to have to be so vague. They are working really hard on updating the suggested product claims to be more detailed and, and, to, and to be wider. And so they told me that that's going to be available within the next month. So within the next month, we can watch and see that the product, the suggested claims are going to give us a little bit more of a range of things that we can say. And so that'll be nice. It's a very helpful document in your virtual office. It's, it's really, really helpful, really great, a really great guide. So print that out, just keep it by you and use it. And once you read it and you use it a lot, you'll get the hang of it and you won't need it anymore. So um, when we're talking about um, other posts, so there's public posts, say like Dr. Axe posts something about frankincense and we know that it's not compliant. So we know we can't share it, right? Um, and when we when we make that decision, if it's a link, if it includes a link, you make sure that that link doesn't have something that's not compliant before you decide if you're you know to share it. Because even if the post itself is compliant, if it has a link that's not compliant, 
and link something in that link, you are responsible for that if you share it. However, when it comes to liking or commenting on those posts, that's tough. And I'm not getting the same answer on that one. So most of them are telling me no. If you like or comment on a post that's not compliant, it may show up in your newsfeed and it may show up in your newsfeed publicly. So that is where we where we can get into non-compliance in that way. Also, if um so what another thing on that same topic, so I don't recommend that. I found that I have stopped doing that and just look at the posts and read them and that's great and just not react to them at all because I've had somebody message me after I liked a post and they were like, hey, can I get that? Can I order that from you? And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, that thing that, that, you, that you, I didn't post about that. And they're like, oh, I think you liked it or something. So it's showing up. So it's kind of like you're posting it. That's just the way Facebook works, unfortunately. So I wouldn't recommend liking or commenting on those. When you have a page, whether it's your personal Facebook page or your Instagram or anything that allows comments, a business page, there is some discrepancy and I'm kind of going back and forth with the compliance department about whether how to handle comments. So if you post something about these vitality supporting your immune system and somebody says like, oh, we've got colds over here, do you think it will help? How do we handle that? Well, originally, Young Living Compliance said, you have to delete that comment. However, a few months ago, I saw on their compliance page, and if you guys don't follow their compliance page, I think it's Conduct Success, Young Living Conduct Success. I think that's what the page is called. It's a great page to follow. Anyway, on there, they had said that as long as you respond compliantly, then you're okay. In this recent audit that I'm going through right now, the guy that I'm working with, he said, no, you have to delete all the comments. And I said, but your page said we don't, and that if we respond, we just have to respond compliantly. And he said, hmm, I'll have to check into that. So I don't have the final word on that one yet. I will get back to you. What I recommend for now is if somebody comments on it and they're asking something like that, private message them. Let them know that you're bound by compliance regulations and help them in a private message and then go back and delete their comment. That would be the best way to do it. And besides, this business is about personal connections. So what a great excuse to be able to just make a personal connection with somebody through a private message and help them out, right? Okay, so I'll get the final word to you on that one when I hear that. Another thing to remember is that if there's a product that's like an over-the-counter product or something if you would go to the pharmacy store and get it you cannot make that claim about it with essential oils for instance there are smoking cessation products out there at the pharmacy so that's not one that you can say you know this essential oil helps with smoking cessation right you can't say that that's one specific one that I had asked about so there may be others that's just one example that I had Ask, ask specifically about. Again, I would encourage you to watch your hashtags and your emojis, okay? We've had people get audited and called out on emojis, you know, that emoji with the mask, um, hashtags like healing oils, healing oils of the Bible, hashtag, those kinds of hashtags. Those are not compliant either. Those will get flagged. Medicine, God's medicine, hashtag, those kinds of things. Those will get flagged as well. Let me go back and get some um, I think I'm getting behind on your questions. So let me see here. No, Carrie, other essential oil brands have not updated their product line based on those new um, FDA regulations. And I am not exactly sure why. But Young Living is always ahead of the game. So, all right. Um, All right, and then so you guys know that um, Young Living is updating their product claims. They want to be able to give us a wider range of things that we can say, and they're really working hard on that right now. That'll be available in the um, if you were at convention, if you've seen the new convention, the products released at convention, you've noticed that they're they're coming out with more and more OTC products, over the counter products like the Cool Azul Pain Cream, the sunscreen, the um, insect repellent. They're doing that because that gives us 
the freedom to be able to say that it helps as an insect repellent, that it helps with sunburn, that it helps as a sunscreen, because we couldn't say those about the oils. So Young Living is really upping the game and putting out more OTC products, and they said at convention that they're going to keep working on that too. So they're really hearing on this, and they really want to be able to share the way that we want to share as well, but they really are just working hard to stay in the confines of the law. Let me make sure... So, Tiffany, for topical use for an oil, you would not say that it supports the body at all. You wouldn't say that it supports anything. You would say that it provides a refreshing aroma or that it provides a cooling sensation on the body, things like that. But it doesn't support the hormones. It doesn't support body temperature. It doesn't support those, you know what I mean, those kinds of things. It doesn't support the immune system. It doesn't support liver, liver health, things like that. You cannot pin things on your Pinterest board either, Mindy. Uh, nope. You, if you have a private Pinterest board so that you can access that information later, um, I'm pretty sure that, that they're not, that's not going to get flagged, but I don't quite know how, the, how that works specifically. So, so the most important thing, let's see. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. So there we go. And, yeah. Save it. Yep. Um, so yes, you can say that they are God's gift to us, Cindy, definitely. Just not God's medicine, right. Yep. All right, so check out in your virtual office the hot words. Watch for those. Don't even use them in hashtags. And obviously this is not a complete and concise list because, um, Jessica said she heard even the private boards can be reviewed. Thanks, Jessica. So there you go. I recommend just saving your links and things like that on a Word document or something, right? So, you know what? If When I talk to Richie again at Compliance, I'll ask him about the Pinterest thing, but I'm sure he's going to tell me no, not to do it on there either. I don't know. All right, so this is not a complete list of the conduct success hot words. You know, we're not going to, um, like I said, things like medicine and healing, those aren't on here either, but those are not compliant whether they're hashtags or emojis or anything like that that indicate that. Okay, all right, let me make sure I got, so that was comments, you know, and one thing that people ask about is what about a testimony? If if you are a Young Living member, you cannot share testimonies either unless they are compliant, whether it's your testimony or somebody else's testimony. So, you know, again, structure function claims for vitality oils if you need to, that are compliant, otherwise aromatic, topical, whatever for that. So, all right, let's see, make sure I got something. All right, so again, check out Young Living's recommended product descriptions. They're a really good guide. One thing that helps me is instead of saying why you use it, say how. All right, so uh, for instance, I'm not going to say that brain power supports you know, supports brain health, right? But I'm gonna say that I diffuse it when we're studying. I mean, it means the same thing, right, you guys? But it's just compliant. So it's really, it, it's just say how you're using it instead of why. That kind of tends to work better when you're talking about them. So when you're talking about ingredients or something, yes, okay, so that's a great question, Kayla. So if you are talking about kelp, right? Um, but honestly, like, there's no kelp in thiamine anyway. It's it's an it's a separate iodine. All right, but yes. So if you are talking about iodine in a totally separate post, you don't mention thiamine and you don't say here's the thyro here's the iodine that I recommend. Yeah, you can say whatever you want about it. Basically, you can put research links on there. You can talk about how it heals thyroid and stuff like that. If you're just talking about iodine. You're not going to be talking about thyramin, you're not going to have a picture of it, and you're not going to say, here's the iodine that I recommend. Yes, you can totally do that, and I got verification from the compliance department about that. So, like, one of the scientists at Young Living, what he did at an event that we were at before convention was that he, instead of talking about ninja nitro, for example, he broke down the ingredients, and he just talked about the ingredients, Right? So you can educate people on this, the ingredients and like the supplements and things like that and separately and, and um, as long as you're not like saying, okay, now here's the one I recommend. Does that make sense? So yes, 
by all means, go ahead and educate people on iodine. Go ahead and educate people on, uh, you know, thyroid glandulars. Go ahead and educate people on vitamin C, um, MSM, things like that, right? And you know what, though? Um, when it comes to supplements, Young Living has some really awesome product descriptions on those, too, that are compliant, and they're super in-depth and super compliant. Super good information, too. So for supplements, it's a little bit easier. So Andrea asked if we have to be compliant with one-on-ones. One-on-ones, personal messages, things like that. There is a lot of gray area in those things. What we were told is basically the FDA looks at intent. So what your intent is behind it. If you're putting out a public post to people, you know, you've got people who aren't members, people who are members, whatever. The intent is basically to share a product that people could buy from you. So obviously you're bound by business speech laws in that because the intent is what it is when it's public. In personal messages, one-on-ones, there's so much gray area. So I don't feel personally comfortable advising on that. When you're in a personal meeting with somebody, you're basically um, just sitting down to help them. You are basically, here's how I look at it. Um, in your, with, when you're in a one-on-one, -on -one, you are you're not making recommendations to somebody. You are leading them to resources that they can find their own answers, right? So, and personally, you know, that stuff is not trackable. Really, you know what I mean? So, and it can't be deleted once it's said, like Facebook posts can. So, um, personally, I don't worry about those too much. Well, I'm, what I do pay attention to is the stuff that's out there and it stays out there. It's public. It's the intent is to, to get a wide range of people, some that are not members, because that, um, that intent is obviously a little bit different than that. So, so, so I recommend if somebody is asking you a question and you don't feel comfortable publicly answering it, send them a private message. Nope, you cannot say that, Kaylin. So if you're making claims about iodine, like it heals the thyroid or something like that, then you cannot say these that there's iodine and thyromin or Young Living has a product that has iodine. You can't say any of that. If you're making compliant claims about iodine, though, how like it does support, um, you know, breast health and, and thyroid health, then yes, you can say that. But if you're making disease claims where you're saying it heals the thyroid or it helps with hypothyroidism or something like that, then you cannot reference Young Living, you cannot reference Thyromin. So yes, Mindy, you do. I encourage you guys to go and delete any non-compliant pins on your Pinterest board, any posts on your Facebook, Instagram accounts, things like that. Because here's the beautiful thing, if you spend time right now going through all of that and doing that, you're not gonna have to worry about the audit, you know, being audited, your account being flagged. And if it does, at least you know maybe it was just one or two things that you missed and you can just easily go back through it because that's when people want to quit. And that's when their passion for this gets sucked away. As when they have years and years of posts that they have let go that, that are not compliant and, and the task of deleting them is so huge and going through them is so huge. So I encourage you to take some time, go through your Pinterest boards, go through your Facebook account, your Instagram account, your Twitter account, anything like that, and delete the ones that are not compliant. Besides, they've been up for a while, who's going back to look at them right now anyway, right? And just start fresh, start fresh, start new with, with compliant claims and peace of mind. It's so worth it. So let me just make sure. Um, all right, so as far as secret groups and things like that go, I don't honestly feel comfortable advising about that because, yeah, Sarah Harnish says that they're going to be, that they, that they, those are flagged and stuff. Um, that's not been my experience. So, so there's the option of doing secret groups, 
in closed groups and then you know public groups well obviously in a public group it's going to get flagged in a closed group it possibly could get flagged secret group only members are allowed in those groups so it depends on who you let in the group and stuff too I guess so it you know that one um, make your own decisions on that uh, if it were Young Living I'm sure they would say that we need to be compliant on those too so Um, Marie, we don't really know if we're, it, it's not like we're being watched. There are just programs, software programs that are basically like filters for the internet and they just have these certain programs where it just automatically flags, especially for these hot words. So these hot words will really get you flagged fast. So, so that's why it's important. Those are in the system for the, the software for it. So. Oh, Susie, you're going through this too? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just good to just start fresh. So do it before audit the, you know, before your account is audited so you're not discouraged, so you don't have to go back through a bunch of stuff when it when you've got 10 days to do it because when once your account is audited, you have 10 days to go through it all. Young Living's really great at working with us though. So it, it's not as scary as it sounds, but it is when you, it, it, it's a little frustrating when you've got years and years of posts that you have to go through and pages and different social media accounts. So it's worth it to just take some time in the next week or two and go through your posts, go through your pin, Pinterest pins and things like that and, and start, you know, if it's, if, if it's an old one and it says like thieves supports the hormones and stuff like that um, or you know whatever thieves supports the immune system and it's the it's not the topical or the vitality one just you know what just delete it so the old ones used to be labeled all three of them but we're gonna go with the new structure function claims only for the vitality oils so so that's the one thing there's one other thing too that got me if you're going to be talking about the income that you get from Young Living, you have to link the income disclosure statement. So there's a 2016 income disclosure statement that you can just Google and find right away with Young Living. You have to include a link for that if you are going to talk about making income with Young Living. If you're going to talk about anything to do with income with Young Living, make sure you include the income disclosure statement. Sandy, I saw that you updated a post, so good job on that. That's one thing that my account got flagged for too. Indirect marketing businesses, it is a law that you have to have the income disclosure statement when you make claims about income. Because when you make a claim about income, we can't be taking on the liability saying that if somebody else gets to that point that they'll be making that kind of income too, right? So the income disclosure statement gives ranges and averages and stuff like that. So that's what the income disclosure statement is for. So make sure if you talk about your check or you know how you're retiring your husband or something like that, that you put the income disclosure statement in there too. Oh, sorry, Susie, that's just, oh. Yep, it's, it's a learning process. You can edit the post instead of deleting it too. Yes, if the photo is compliant, definitely, Andrea. Just, want, just change the wording on it. Yep, and if you're not sure what to write or you just don't want to sit and thumb through it, just put what Young Living has on their website or their product claims and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. So edit it or delete it, depending on it. Some of them, I've had, like I had some YouTube videos that were super great for, there were, an, it was an hour of a video and there was one thing in there. And so for some of them, I just, I cut that little, those little five seconds out. And then some of them, there was five seconds here and five seconds here and five seconds here and I just deleted them for now or whatever. One of the things that really got me in most of my posts that I noticed is, and here's a big one, RC, we're talking about it for respiratory support. We did that for the longest time. We can't do that anymore. RC is a cosmetic now because there is not a dietary one. And so we cannot say that RC is for respiratory support. So we can talk about how it has an invigorating aroma you know stuff like that but um yeah I don't have the RC with me but so watch that one because that one I noticed in a lot of my 101 classes and videos and things like that so the RC respiratory support one that's a tough one I'm sorry guys but I'm gonna tell you what there's hope and it's totally okay because guess what you guys 
I mean, other than a few goof ups here and there, things that I was missing and the whole structure function claim that it took me a while to really understand and to get, I was, my the post that I've had on social media that went viral, that really, really got a lot of reactions, a lot of likes, a lot of comments and things like that were compliant ones. They were totally compliant. And I'll post some examples in the group this next week, but I want you to know that it's very, very possible to keep growing in ranks and growing your business and, and enrolling new members while being compliant. Sometimes, you know, you can learn to be more creative and have more fun with it and things like that. And honestly, I love a challenge. And so this has just been more of a challenge for me to learn how to do it better and up my game. And when I up my game, I get some stuff that's really good content and it really draws people in. So don't let that discourage you guys. There's still a lot we can say and do. And when I said earlier, make it your own, um, you know, you can use what Young Living is saying, but also if you're going to look at saying how instead of why you're using a product, you can do really good. For instance, if I post a picture of Thieves Household Cleaner that somebody has designed in Photoshop or, you know, things like that and it's really fancy and it talks about all the uses for it and stuff, it might do pretty good. But once I posted a picture, cheesy, bad lighting, just a picture of the big bottle in the plastic bag still laying on my table. And I talked about how, how inexpensive of a cleaner it is and how long it lasts and it went viral. That post did really, really well. So I didn't talk about it like killing germs or anything like that. I didn't need to. So we're not gonna talk about Thieves Household Cleaner as that kind of stuff. We don't say it kills germs and stuff, and we don't need to. It works great, it smells great, people can see for themselves. So the products speak for themselves. With Young Living, we just have to get creative, use compliant language to get them into people's hands and then they can experience the products for themselves and no more words are necessary after that. And then what our job is to do is to lead them to additional resources where they can get information to figure out things for their own health, right? And so once somebody's a member, um, one thing I wanna mention too really quick is that we don't, we cannot advertise non-compliant books too. So like the desk reference, Dr. Kurt Schnaubelt's books, like The Healing Intelligence of Essential Oils, The Healing Oils of the Bible by Dr. David Stewart, those are non-compliant books. So we can't advertise those or talk about those publicly with non-members. Once somebody is a member, however, um, we can share those resources with them. So when somebody's a member and they're experiencing the products, then you lead them to those resources where they can find their own information. The liability for making recommendations of essential oils for health stuff is not on you. And neither is the burden of having to figure out what they need and what their body needs. Because I've been a natural health practitioner for many years and I can take and see what the research says somebody should use for their body or something going on. But they'll use something else because that's what they had on hand and they didn't have the other thing on hand. And voila, it works fabulously. And it works amazing in, in two days, right? So we just want to lead people to the resources to be successful with their health things on their own. And the liability is not on us. They're more empowered to take care of their health. And we save our account. We save our company and our access to the essential oils. Um, handouts are the same thing, Marie. So if it's a non-compliant handout, we are not to be handing them out at like if you're doing a public class, it, you, you don't want to have resources that are not compliant. So you cannot have the desk reference displayed at your class. There is a, a little thing that says you can have it outside of your class. So if you have it in the doorway just outside of your class, you can have those other resources available outside of your class, whether if it's a printout that isn't compliant or the desk reference or something like that, just not in your class and just not as part of your class, but outside the door separately or whatever in a different room. So yes, you can. Itovis, if you have an Itovi, fabulous resource. Message me if you don't have one. 
they are a great resource to have and they do not diagnose or anything like that so you can use those as class at classes and things like that too to help people get their own information as well one thing I will say that got me too is research links so those of you who know me know I love research and for a while they said that it was okay to have research links as long as what you have in your post is compliant that is no longer true so even if it's published in a medical journal and it's a and it's a PubMed link it's not compliant to share that so unless it's 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 a compliant research link like if it's if it's saying it supports the body systems or something like that but if it got a you know if it's saying like lavender helps with asthma and it's research from PubMed it doesn't matter you can't post that um, so but you can take the lavender vitality and you sure can say you can support healthy respiratory or something like that or healthy gut with lavender vitality but just not posting that research link publicly so that was one that got me too I had to go through my a lot of posts and just delete the research link so save those because for your own personal use because um, they're great to have at least I think so alright so don't be discouraged like I said you could totally be successful and compliant at the same time um, it's working for me so I just got to fine-tune it a little bit again and as things are updating Young Living will keep us updated so just regularly be checking back in your member resources in your virtual office and seeing what's there there are a lot of great resources on the topic there you don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, and you know if you do want to not sound so um, formatted or whatever like Young Living's things maybe are saying you know it's formulated to do this and that if you want to just be more real more personal like I said share why share how not why share how you put it in your diffuser before bedtime don't say that you know what I mean like it helps your body produce melatonin and blah 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 just say that it um, you find it works great before diff diffusing it before bedtime or whatever something like that so if you guys you guys are my team I'm here for you guys to help you phrase things compliantly and figure that out um, once I am not so crazy busy with making sure that my compliance audit is complete I can help you guys go through your stuff too if you want biggest takeaway Don said is not to be the authority but to help people experience the oils and encourage them to do their own research it's actually the best way to do this business you guys it really is even for somebody like me who's a natural health practitioner I'm telling you what I have members who figured out what works for them that was not something that I thought would have worked for them that's not something that the research showed it would have worked for them so we are here whether you are a natural health guru or you are just you know you are just not wanting to have anything to do with that you're just starting out you know you're just changing your lifestyle whatever the case you don't have to know all this stuff that's the cool thing you don't have to know what I know and, and and you know you don't have to know what people need because you are empowering them to figure out what works for them you are empowering the, them to figure out where to go find the information that they need for their health and to listen to their bodies and to see what they should be using for themselves right yep like Kira said don't post a picture of a non-compliant book like the desk reference and say this is what I'm reading for tonight sorry can't that's not compliant so Mindy if they are non-members you are not supposed to be buying people the desk reference or any other non-compliant books once they are a member you definitely can gift them something like that or lead them to where they can get it themselves but not before they are a member yep so I tell I Toby scans totally compliant um, let's see here Zyto scans I don't remember I I don't know if those are compliant or not look at when you do a scan what the language is on it and how it uses it if there are any like disease claims hot words in there then those would not be compliant to be using at class Yep, I Toby scan. I T O V I. 
So downloads too, as far as pictures, no, if they're downloaded onto your computer, Cindy, no big deal. You don't have to delete those. There is a Facebook page on compliance. I think it's called Young Living Conduct Success. And the Conduct Success team really wants to help us out. I mean, they don't like having to confine us or anything like that. But they sure work really, really hard to make sure we have the resources to keep our access to essential oils with Young Living and things like that. So use, check out their page and um, contact them if you have questions too. Uh, okay, so Ashley, once they are members, you can totally give them those reference books. Yeah, you can. And I think those would be great for new member packets. When somebody is first starting out, they get they, they enroll with their kit, you give them those little reference books, and they will really know how to use the oils in their kit. So I, I think those work really great for new member kits, but you can't give them out to people who aren't members because they're not compliant. There are a lot of compliant resources out there for non-members. We are on Vital 180's team under Brenda and Scott Schuler. They have Simply Sharing books. If you guys are on my team or under Brenda and Scott somewhere else, the Simply Sharing book is a great tool to give new members because it's totally compliant. It's got a lot of information in it. If you go to discoverlsp.com, Life Science Publishing, they have a lot of non-compliant resources as well as compliant resources. So check them out before you buy them. But they have PSK flyers that are compliant. It's just a really nice glossy flyer. And it shows the premium starter kit. And then if you flip it over, it has compliant language listed for each essential oil in the premium starter kit too. So there's a lot of great resources. Thank you for that link. So Don's got the link right there for the Conduct Success page on Facebook. So I hope I covered this, the most, the majority of it, what you need to know. There's always going to be questions. And if those questions aren't answered anywhere where you can find the answers, just make sure to shoot an email to the conduct success team or comment if they're talking about it on their page. And they're really great about answering questions. So that's how I find out a lot. Um, and so be watching in your virtual office for the product claims to be updated because there's going to be more things that we can say. And it's just a really great guide. So that's really your best bet. So tonight, go ahead and go to your virtual office, your member resources, and print off the suggested product claims. I think that's what the document's called. Um, if you go to member resources, I think you might have to click again on the um, product education. So go to Memory Sources, then click on Product Education, and then check out the conduct hot words that you want to avoid. There's a document called Sharing is Easy with some great information. And also print out the product, um, the suggested product claims. It's really great information. So I hope that helps you guys. I want to see you succeed. I don't want to see you have to feel like quitting because you get a message, an email, and a snail mail letter from the conduct success team saying you've got 10 days to go through your stuff. So be proactive, do it now, take care of it. Uh, those of you guys on my team, message me if you are not sure about something or if you need help going through things like that. So I think we should dedicate this next month to really making sure that our, our social media posts are compliant and just maintaining the integrity of Young Living, maintaining our free access to those products and to be able to um, just be compliant and share without the liability that comes with making disease claims and things like that. So I hope that helps you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I will take this next week to just kind of post things here and there, showing you some of the things that were really popular that were totally compliant and giving some really concrete examples for you guys to check out. And again, make it your own because, you know, this business is about really being personal and real with people and making those personal connections. So this is a great opportunity to do that. All right, you guys, have a great night.